All right. So, uh, let's talk about what we've done this week. We've got uh, Monday we researched. Mm-hmm. Then Tuesday we kind of rehearsed it, and yesterday you presented. I got to present. She's got to go. We'll have her run up here in just a second. Do it. Um, what? Last week you guys took notes all week uh, through the chapter, and then these little presentations kind of helped you to look at one thing specifically about the war, look it up, put them together, jump up here and do it. Uh, but as I told you guys, uh, all the points come down to the test at the end, the test on Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, and that test is going to have be made up of two parts. If you draw a little pie here. You know, the first half of the test is the notes that we took last week. So everybody's got those. And then the second half is from the presentations that were yesterday. Um, so Raven did not get to go, so Raven can come up here in just a second to do hers. Uh, but different people presented different things in different classes. So what I want to do today is review over everything. Because last night I made the test, sat down at home. Uh, I don't know what you guys do on Wednesday night, but I was making a history test. So, I was in church. There you go. Um, made the test last night. Oh, that's my test. There it is, right there. Mm-hmm. Where? 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 Um, so we're going to talk through it today because certain things were presented in this class that weren't presented in other classes, and vice versa. You guys cover a lot of things, but this class was mostly like you guys talked about weapons. So there were other classes that talked about other things, and I want to make sure we all cover them on the same page before the test tomorrow. So. I sorted through your presentations last night, picked out the stuff that I liked, put it on the test, but today I want to go through the test and make sure we're all good to go. Okay, yes, sir. Um, so we're going to review for the test. Uh, Ray, do you want to jump up here real quick and do your thing? Yes. What's yours over? The uh, nurses. Um, some people say my name is Abraham. How does American Red Cross system Okay, so she's going to come up and tell us how that affected the war. So jump up here real quick. Stand, That's not long, Bobby. Stand right here at all. Um, I need to it's going to be one, two minutes. Shut up. Okay, go ahead. Okay, my name is Rachel Tucker, and my presentation is about the uh, nurses. Uh, within weeks of the outbreak of war, the American Red Cross dispatched the ship to Europe loaded with medical and personnel supplies. Name of the SS Red Cross was better known as the Mercy Ship. The Mercy Ship it carried 176 surgeons and nurses who were being sent to Europe to provide medical relief to combat casualties on both sides of the war. This was consistent with the Articles of Geneva Conventions and the principles of the Red Cross movement that called for strict observation of neutrality and impartiality. Additionally, personnel supplies followed, but the Red Cross ended this effort after a little more than a year primarily because of lack of sufficient funding. The United States declared war against Germany. The American Red Cross found itself embarking on the adventure that would transform it almost overnight into the large and important organization it is today. As the public's patriotism rose to a fever pitch in the early days of the war, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson, uh, as honorary chairman of the Red Cross, urged his fellow citizens to urge their energies into help for the organization that needed their voluntary support in order to meet the needs of the thousands of young men joining the forces on the battlefield of Europe. In those early days, Red Cross National Headquarters reeled under the under the demands of the national war effort. Communities flooded the headquarters with requests to establish local chapters needed needs grew much faster than the infractures infrastructures infrastructure to support them and the situation was described as chaotic. In May nineteen seventeen President Wilson appointed a war council to direct the Red Cross under these circumstances and selected Henry 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 P. Davidson, a successful New York banker as the council's volunteer chair. Volun- Great. Hey, real quick, how would you say, uh, what are, what's the big question we're trying to ask her? How, how does this affect World, 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 World War One?
more than one site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Just, I got, got it on my track. I do one of Great. Good. Have a seat. Look at the No. Okay, good. <laughs> Just jump right in. Good. So today we're reviewing. Um, what I would do, I would I would get something to write on and something to write with if you can. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. It's your personal decision. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Um, just so that we're kind of clear on how this works, there's no, there's no points for today. So if you don't want to do it, that's fine. You're not going to suffer any points. But the points are tomorrow, so this will help you get a better grade tomorrow. Yes, you're going to want your notes for tonight. So, look over notes for so I had a... Uh, professor in college who uh, different professors do different things, but um, what this guy would do is some, some professors would review, kind of how I'm doing, they would review and then test, but if you do your review the day before the test, um, you guys know in college you don't have to go to class every day, so nobody would come to class for weeks, and then they would show up and sit through the review, and then just go home and study what he said, and then come back and do the test, and they get a decent enough grade to pass, and they just keep going. I ain't got it you can get away with not going to class in college, depending on who your professor is. It's up to each professor. Like, there's no school-wide rules. It's it's like inside the classroom. So the professor could say, you can text it up, you can text all you want, you can do whatever you want in this class, but you can only miss three times. You can only miss three times, and I'm gonna kick you out. Or another professor could say, I don't want to see any texting. I don't want to see computers. I don't want to see any sign of anything that says that it's past 1950 because I'm an old man and I don't like computers. But I don't care if you come or not. You know, it's just a trade-off. Different people do different things. But anyway, this guy realized, he said, every time I do the review the day before the test, uh, nobody comes, and then they come for the review, and come for the test, and they never show up again. So he started doing it. And so he said, I still want to do the review. I don't want to rip everybody off. I still want to do the review. But I'm going to stop doing it the day before the test. So what he would start doing is, you know, you probably study three or four weeks before you take a test. He would just randomly throw the review in there somewhere, just random. That way, the people who were actually coming. So, like, what you would really do is, like, let's say, we could be even, like, you wouldn't start with Okay, Let's say we're like two, two, three weeks out from the test, and it's like a Friday morning. There's like a big frat party everybody knows about the night before, and so everybody's hungover, and nobody came to class. And, it, and, then, and then on top of that, it rained, so nobody wanted to get out of bed, and it's like an 8 a.m. class, and nobody came. And let's also say it's the Friday before spring break. So like, basically the best possible odds for no one coming to class. So he walks into class and there's like six people here. So he's like, hey, let's review for the test. He's going to wait and pick the perfect day to review for the test. And I always thought that was funny. But what he would never say we're going to review for the test. All he would do, he kept, all the professors keep their tests like in a folder. And they got it sitting right up here with them the whole time they're talking, all the time. It just kills you looking at it. He would never say we're review for the test. All he would do is he would go, huh, nobody's here today. Where's everybody? And we'd say, oh, they're all hungover. There's a party. They all left early for spring break. He'd go, why are you guys here? He'd go, well, because we... Didn't go to the party last night because we knew we had class this morning. Okay. Well then, know the following things, please. And he would pull his test out and put it on the desk and he'd just read the test. And you just write everything down as fast as you possibly could. And then go home and look at that. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you have something to write on, something to write with, um, I got know the following things, please. Okay. I'm not going to repeat myself. You're welcome. This is free game to write anything down that you like, but I'm not going to repeat myself. And if you have questions, that's awesome. There's probably things you have questions about. Hold them till the end, okay? We're just going to go through these. Just write down what you can. Okay, here we go. I'm probably going to ask you a question. There's 24 questions, so leave space. There's 24. Um, I'm probably going to ask you something about the Lusitania. You need to, you know how to spell that? Write it up your last period. Here you go. Lusitania. Probably going to ask you something about that. Okay? Something to know. Lusitania. So find your, you know, pull out your notes from when we wrote notes last week, all last week, and just search on it and find where it says Lusitania and read it, read what points it has there, and that'll prepare you. it would be a real straightforward question about the Lusitania. So look that up. Something else? There were a couple definitions in your notes. I'm going to pull three definitions out, okay? So keep your eye on for three definitions, and they'll be kind of thrown in throughout here. But here's one of them right off the bat: militarism. You don't need to know how to spell it necessarily. It's going to be on the test for this militarism. Just read it, write it down in your. On your paper there, so you can go find it in your notes. Find militarism. 
get that definition ready. Another definition, here's another one, I'll just go ahead and go right into it. You vote. You don't need to know, you know, for this question, you don't need to know what they did or that they were made out of steel or anything like that. You just need to know what do you vote, okay? So you're going to want to know that. Um, so just curious, and I don't want to do this for all of them, just does anyone remember what a U-boat is? Submarine. submarine. German submarine. Yeah. So you're trained. German submarine, two words. Okay? You don't have to write a big long sentence, just German submarine. That's what you're looking for. When you see U-boat on here, you're going to say German submarine. The three words that I picked, I literally, this is what I did, I went through the notes that I took while you guys were up here, and said, what three definitions have the shortest answer possible? German submarine, two words, that was a good one. So German submarine. Trying to make it as easy and straightforward as you as possible. I'm trying to trick you up, trip you up on the test. There's no tricks in this. Next question. I'm going to ask you. You're going to want to know. There's a couple of questions about the United States. Even though this is world history, we're currently in Gurdon, which is in Arkansas, which is the United States. So I like the United States. They happen to be a favorite country of mine. So I'm going to ask you, would you say the United States was more active in the first part of the war or the second half of the war? I'm going to ask you that. So kind of know that. Very straightforward question. If your butt has been in the seat for the past two weeks, Shouldn't even have to look that one up. Would you say the, the United States was more active in the first half of the war or the second half of the war? If you don't know it, it's probably all over the place in your notes or in the book. If you, even if you don't write anything down, you can find the book. But your notes are going to be a lot faster than going through the book if you did take good notes. Another thing. In the war, there were two sides. Anytime you see two sides on the test, think two teams, two whatever you want to call it. Those two sides. You're going to want to know those names. I can't see what it's like. Come closer. You're going to want to know these two names right here. I'm not going to say them out loud. Just written on the board. Two sides. There's two sides in the war. There's two teams. If you can't see it, i got a lot of desks right up here. Real close. Come on up. No problem. Right here. Come sit right here if you can't see it. Come on up. You're going to want to know those. Because there's going to be three questions after those where I'm going to give you a country, and I'm going to want you to say the name of the side that it was on. So when you're trying to pick what to study about, you're trying to kind of put a lot of energy into one thing, that's going to be a lot of points. That's going to be technically four questions on the whole test. It's going to be you knowing the name of this and the name of that. Allies, central powers. Allies, central powers. You're going to want that, okay? Once you've identified those, uh, one of the three countries I'm going to ask you, I'm going to say, which side was Britain fighting on? Which side did Britain fight on? You don't have to write down the whole question. You can just say Britain, question mark, side, question mark, something like that. Britain side. Does anybody remember what side they fought on? Central power. Wrong. Allies. Allies. Okay, so you're going to say Britain. Now, like, if I said, which side did Britain fight on, and you said they fought with the Americans, that's wrong. That's incorrect. Because I'm telling you, I want you to say allies. That's the answer. The answer is literally on the board right now. Which side of Britain fight on? Allies. Don't say they fought with the Americans. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for allies. That's what side they fought on. Okay. Another one. This is almost a, a verbatim repeat question. The question is almost perfectly on the test twice, but it's worded differently. The way this one's worded is more like, did the United States, was the United States involved at the very beginning, or the, at the first day of the war, or the last day of the war? Anybody know? Right now? The last day, in the second half. It's like the exact same question as earlier. It's the same question. I just wanted to get a couple of U.S. questions on here, and I accidentally repeated one. In case you tell this morning, that's your bonus. That's, that's yeah. my fault, your game here. I accidentally basically put the same question on here twice, but it's worded in a different way, and I catch it. Uh, uh, another definition, I think this is your third one, I don't know, kind of keep me straight. I think your third definition is nationalism. So you should have three definitions now on the paper. Just going through the text, just write stuff down. You look up those three definitions. Does anybody remember what nationalism is? You're going to go look it up in your notes, not. Does anybody remember right now what nationalism is? Love of country. That's right. Three words. Love of country. That's what I want on the test. You can write me a big, pretty sentence or a paragraph, but really, as soon as I see the words love of country, I'm going to say full credit to everyone. <coughs> love of country. So what was you vote? Love of German submarine. So, and then what is the other one? What is militarism? Anyone? What is it? Glorification of the military. Four words. 
So militarism, glorification of the military. Nationalism, love of country. There's seven. You vote German submarine. There's nine words. That's three questions on the test. You got nine words. I literally picked the smallest ones I could find. Glorification of the military, love of country, German submarine. There's all your answers right here. Good. Moving right along. Good. So I don't know what you're writing. I don't know if you're writing the full question. There's a key word in this one. If you just want to write down the word spark, what sparked World War One? Okay, something, one thing, was just kind of a, you know, really wasn't that big a deal. But really, what it ended up doing is it ended up sparking World War One. So if you want to look anywhere, you know, if you can look somewhere and find that answer, you can really find it in a lot of places in your notes or. Anywhere you like, really. Yeah, you can't get me leave. That's what we're doing. I thought there was a photographer who was living there. This one guy, and I mean, I'm not, I don't want to sound like he's not important, but he's not that important. And he got assassinated. Next thing you know, we have a world war on our hands. Or as some pronounce it, war war. Okay. Yeah. So, what about sparks? Yeah. Okay. Good. You could tell me a big long story about this. You could say, when I say what event sparked the First World War, you know, you could say assassination of the Archduke, and you get full credit. You could also say the First World War was a major world conflict that involved countries all around the world, which is why it was called the First World War. Uh, it was before the Second World War. You could go into all this, you know, this ridiculous explanation. Uh, there was a, a man uh, named Franz Ferdinand, who was the Archduke of Austria-Hungary, and uh, he was threatened to be assassinated by a, a college terrorist group in Serbia, and they actually sent him a formal letter and said, we know you're coming to visit our country next month, I wouldn't recommend doing that because on the parade route we're going to kill you. And he read the letter and said, okay, I'm going to come anyway. And then he goes, and he's on the parade route, and they put a bomb in his car, and it didn't go off like it was supposed to, so a few blocks later, one of the leaders of the group pulled out a pistol and shot him and his wife in the head on the parade route. And anyway, him as being assassinated actually ended up sparking Austria-Hungary to declare war on Serbia, which then Germany backed, and then this entire assassination involved the entire world because the entire world jumped in on the First World War. That's full credit. You know what else is full credit? Assassination of the Archduke. Four words. So just, I'm looking for this. Assassination of the Archduke. That's all. Real straightforward. It's not a tricky test. So I wanted to know if the United States was more active in the first or the second. How about Russia? Would you say Russia was more active in the first half of the war or the second half of the war? You don't want to know that. That's in your notes. No problem there. I'm going to ask you, earlier I asked you what side Great Britain fought on. I'm also going to ask you what side did the United States fight on. So you're going to want to know that. And then the third country, I told you I was going to ask you three countries. The third country, I'm going to ask you what side did they fight on. I'm going to ask you what side did Germany fight on. So we did Great Britain, the United States, and Germany. That's Great Britain, the United States, and Germany. We clear on what side they fought on. Nobody likes Germany, so however you want to remember it, Germany's over there all alone. Okay? Good. You should have about 12 things written down, hopefully. Somewhere near 12 things, maybe, possibly. Yes? They have a little Is bit different. Is Britain and Great Britain the same thing? Yes, they are. Yeah. Okay. We're about halfway down with the test. I got a question. Yes. So it was only um, three people fighting? No, there's more than I mean, that. I'm just asking you. I'm asking, I'm just asking you three. Let's hold all the questions in. Let me get all the way through the study guide. We'll do all the questions in. Another question. What continent was this war fought on? What continent? Continent. 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 She's not even in this class. She hasn't been sitting in this class for the last two weeks. Um, but, you know, senior in college, I was like, oh, you know this stuff. But she hadn't had this class since her 11th grade year in high school. But I just wanted her to take the test and kind of see how it went, see if there's any typos that she caught or anything that tripped her up. And uh, she got almost all of them right, which, which is good. But a few ones that she got wrong was this one. She didn't know which continent World War I was fought on. Uh, 
Uh, anybody know what kind of was Drew said Europe. Europe, correct. All green. Uh, Lauren's guess was Russia. Which is incorrect. Russia is not a continent. It is a country. <laughs> so that was double it. That is incorrect. Do not know Russia. What did you say? Oh, they no, I didn't. No. They called like a moment. wife. However, <laughs> however, she could have easily said, she's a nursing major, and I don't know anything about nursing, the same way I'm a history major, and, I, and she doesn't know anything about history. She could have easily said, oh yeah, well, what's blood pressure? And I would have said, I don't even know what that is. And that's embarrassing, because I should probably know what that is. That's pretty straightforward. Okay. I said, I don't know what a pulse is. That's about it. I don't know anything about nursing. I know if your patient has a pulse, you're doing a job. And if they don't, you need to go get another nurse. <laughs> that's what they're doing. I don't know how to take care of people, so that's that's fine. She doesn't know anything about World War One. What was the goal of U.S. President Wilson during the first half of World War One? So how could you write that down? You could say Wilson's goal, first half war. This is a one-word answer, actually. This is one, one word will get you full credit on this. Can anybody think of the ticket? Peace. Neutral. 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 A little longer. Neutrality. Let's do neutrality. His goal was neutrality, or to remain neutral. But one word makes it neutrality. If you want to do a one word, when you see President Wilson, think neutrality. That was his entire goal. Yeah, you're going to want to spell stuff right. Don't embarrass yourself. There's not that many words to look at on this. You should be able to spell those right. Archduke has eight letters in it. It's one word, Archduke. Don't mess that up. I didn't make you spell Franz Ferdinand. No Franz Ferdinand on this test, just Archduke, but they at least spell Archduke correctly. I've made the test simple enough. Don't embarrass yourself on the parts that I have given you, okay? Okay, here's a big question. I'm going to want to know three of the things that were used during this war, like technology or new inventions, whatever like that. Three things that haven't been used before. Um, this class talked about a lot of these. I'm pretty sure you guys covered all of them. Some of them, um, some of the other classes didn't. A great example of something that hadn't been used before would be airplanes. That's a great example. I can think of a couple more examples. Anybody else think of an example? Machine guns. Machine guns is a great example. Tanks. Tanks is a great example. If you don't want to think of just a fourth example, perhaps. Boys and gas. gas. Also a wonderful example. Those are just four Boys thoughts. You could go, you could choose something else, but those are four safe answers. If you eliminate one of those and put three on the test, that's that's good. So if you write four things down, read over them tomorrow, you kind of blank out on the test, you can't remember one of them. At least you got the other three and you will get full credit for that. Okay? So something like that. Poison gas, tanks, machine guns, and then airplanes slash zeppelins. You could just put airplanes, you could put aviation, and that would take care of the whole thing. Excellent. Next question. How did horses affect the war? Holy cow, we did not even talk about this in this class. But I'll go over it in a second. So circle that one and star it or put a question mark next to it or something and ask me that at the end. Once I've gone through all the questions, then I'll sit down and you guys can just ask me any question. That should be the first question to ask because I'm pretty sure we didn't even talk about horses in this class. But it's on the test because other, other classes did. And okay, that's a good one. How did horses affect the war? Next question. How did propaganda affect the war? Did anyone do propaganda in this class? I saw it, but I didn't. <coughs> so you're going to want to ask me that in a second then. How did propaganda affect the war? That's important. If, if you don't have time to ask me, which we should have time, unless unless it starts getting rowdy or something, we should have plenty of time. If, even if you didn't, that's in your notes. And if it's in your notes, that means it's in the book, because your notes are just a condensed version of the book. So look quickly through your notes to save yourself some time. If they're not there, everything's in the book. Okay? Did I talk about Russia in this class, like Russian fighting yesterday? Did I kind of make a joke about them? Okay. So the next question on the test is... Um, and you can word this however you want, but I'm basically going to ask you, how did Russia fight? What was Ru what was Russia's strategy? What was Tell me about Russian fighting or something, okay? I'm going to say something like that, okay? You're going to want to ask me that question in a minute, but basically, this is ridiculous, but this is Russia's plan running into World War I. They didn't have enough guns made yet. They only had one gun for every two guys. Every other guy didn't have a gun. Half the guys they're sending to battle with no guns. Why are they even sending them in? I don't know. It's a horrible decision. Anyway, so they're sending every other guy in without a gun. Like, he's got a gun, you don't have a gun. So this guy without a gun is like, excuse me, sir, I didn't get one. And he's like, well, we don't have one. Just stick with him. No way I want to get that guy. <laughs> but if you turn around and say, well, I'm going to go home then, they find a gun and they put it in your face and say, turn around, <laughs> you'll be fine. So horrible, horrible. Russia only had one gun for every two guys. It's 
crazy. So like you, you said, buddy system, then I'm sticking right next to that guy. And he said, what if he gets shot? Well, hopefully he does. You can pick up his gun. Now you have a gun. <laughs> crazy. Absolutely nuts. So that question, when I say something about Russian fighting, I just want you to say half the guys didn't have guns. Or they had one gun for every two guys. Or you could say gun shortage. But I'd rather you say something like every other guy didn't have a gun. You could even write, like on the test, you could write like one gun for every two guys. You could write it like this. Because we're talking about this right now, you can even literally write one semicolon two on this test, and I'm going to give you full credit. Why? Because that shows that you absolutely know what you're talking about. One gun, two guys, one semicolon two. I hope to see that. I hope somebody actually writes that, because you'll get full credit. Full credit for that. Because that's not a bull crap answer. That tells me that you were actually paying attention during the review. If you say that, that's the same thing as telling me the whole explanation. If, you, if I say, like, tell me about Russian strategy, and you, you give me something like, they had less muscles, that's the worst answer I've ever heard in my life. You haven't even been, have you even been in class? Like, what is this? They had less muscles. You totally made that up out of thin air. Now, if you're looking at the board, you could say, both of these look like they're made up out of thin air. What's this? However, this is like code, like nerd code for you to me that says, like, hey, one semicolon two, I know what I'm talking about, and I'm going to go, yeah, looks like you do. Full credit. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. This is a bullcrap answer from someone who skipped today and is going to have a bad grade on the test. They're just going to take a stab in the dark and say, they have less muscles? I don't know. I'm going to say zero. Have you said something like um, supply shortages? It's kind of like broad. I'm going to say, hey, that's decent. It sounds like you just kind of forgot the numbers. I'll give you half credit. They didn't have enough supplies or something. That's half credit. You say it is. That's full credit. Which is actually less writing. Then they had less supplies. So if you're trying, if you're used to getting tweets out, 140 characters, you'll love this. One semicolon two. That's it. So we're three fourths of the way through. Next question: When you think World War One, what kind of warfare do you think of? Anyone? Trench. Trench. I drew the beautiful picture of this on the board yesterday. When you think World War One, what kind of warfare? What does the fighting look like? Trench warfare. Trench. Trenches. When you think uh, like Civil War, you think of guys running through the woods shooting each other. When you think of American Revolution, you think of like a big open meadow with guys lining up over here and lining up over here and we'll see what happens. <laughs> when you think of like World War II, it's a lot of like dog fighting with airplanes in the air. When you think of war today, it's more like, don't make me push this red button because you're all the people are bombs. So it's like there's different wars have different looks. You got you know, standing around in a meadow for the American Revolution, you got shooting through the trees in the Civil War. This one is trenches. The next one's gonna be more like planes, sort of. And then now it's like nuclear bombs. But when you think World War One, I, I want you to think trenches. Drew the picture on the board yesterday. When you think World War One, think trenches. Over three fourths of the way through. Here we go. What was the last straw that got the United States involved in the war? This, this is our Zimmerman known is good. What's the last straw? There's one specific thing I'm looking for. German U-boats sinking the Lusitania. So you can either write Lusitania or U-boats, because it's the same thing. U-boats sinking the Lusitania will be a great answer, because it's both. I want you to say Lusitania. I want you to say U-boats. You guys remember what the Lusitania was? This is a big boat full of innocent people. This is not a battleship. This is not a war shit. You know, this is not like a military thing. This is full of innocent people. The Lusitania, this, we think Lusitania, think Titanic. It's like, it's like if the Germans just went up and sunk the Titanic. And it's full of people, our people. So we're upset we joined the war. There's like 1,100 people on board and 100 of them are ours. 124-ish are ours. Here we go. How did dogs affect the war? That'd be a great question to ask in a minute because I don't think we talked about dogs in this class. How did dogs affect the war? Next, what disease affected the world during World War I? It was a disease that affected the entire world, not just the fight, you know, obviously affected because the war was happening, but a disease during this time period affected the world. Influenza, what I'm really looking for, the flu, F-L-U, three letters, flu, influenza, the flu, F-L-U. Two more. How did women affect the war? 
This is a two-part question. You're going to want to make yourself a little bullet point below that and say there's two parts of this. To get full credit, you need to know both parts. Women affected the war, there's two parts. Okay? I just spelled flu wrong. That is so embarrassing. F-O-U, three letters. Ooh. I need that. <laughs> I know I need to. Because it's like blue. No E, F-O-U, three letters. Don't embarrass yourself tomorrow. F-O-U. Last question. Last question. And after this, I'm just going to sit down and I'll answer any questions you have, okay? Last question. Who won? Which side won? Not not just America. I don't want America. I want to know which side won the United the, the World War One. Not the United States. Which side won World War One? The Allies. The Allies won World War One. Okay. Don't put the United States won. Don't put Great Britain won. Don't put France won. Don't put Russia won. They left. The answer is the Allies. Last thing that I'll sit down and do, uh, I'll sit down and do questions. I want to explain how the test looks. First of all, here's what the test looks like. I made this on my computer last time. It's a little different looking. There's the front. There's the back. There's 12 questions on the front. There's 12 questions on the back. The questions over here, the blanks over here. It's not a big blank. I'm not trying to write an essay on this junk. You can probably get a sentence in there if you write it tight, or you can write the word allies this big. It doesn't matter. You know, it depends on what you're answering. Okay? There's 12 questions on the front, there's 12 questions on the back. That makes 24 questions. 24 is an awkward number. I'm trying to make this one to 100. Before, I've taken 24 and said, okay, each question's worth four points. But that makes it out of 96, so I need to go to four points, so I'll just give you four points for your name. Uh, anyway, we're not doing that. We're not doing the name game. Instead, what I'd like to do, and give me your opinion on this in a minute, we can do the name thing, you get four points for the name if you'd rather. Uh, I'll take in your opinions, and they don't, they don't I mean, your vote, it's not good for democracy. I'm not going to stop the vote, but I'll listen to them at least. This is what we're going to do. Huh? Okay, so there's 12 questions on the front. Just do 10 of them. There's 12 questions on the back. Do 10 of those. So you still get 100 if you do it? I'm looking for 10 on the front. I'm looking for 10 on the back. I said I'll leave. All right, say it, leave. No, I said I'll leave before you ask. Here's how this is going to work. You're looking at your test. You got number one, no problem. Number two, no problem. Number three, you don't know it. Skip it. Go to the next one. You get down to the bottom of the page. Looks like you didn't know two of them. Good. That means you did ten of them. Turn the page over. Keep going. That's what I want. I'm looking for ten, okay? Let's, let's say you, uh, what is it? Can we get back to the question? Yeah, we're doing the question. That's all I'm talking about. Yeah, we will. Just a second. We have time. We have time. So, do ten. So, like, let's say... Let's say you skip like, let's say you don't skip any. You do all 12 on the front because you're just, you're just on one. And you studied last night. And you're really doing good. You do all 12. What am I going to do? I'm going to grade 1 through 10, and then I'm going to turn it over. If you miss 9 and 10, I don't look at 11 and 12 because I told you. I'm going to grade the first 10. I'm going to flip it over. So doing all 12 doesn't better your odds. I'm going to grade the first 10. If I were you, if you do all 12, I'd look back over them and say, which two of these are the weakest answer? Which two of these are the worst answer? Go ahead and eliminate those. Mark them out. Erase them. Do something. Because I'm going to look for 10. When I get to 10, you've got your points. I'll flip it over. Okay. Don't do 12 on the front and 8 on the back. If you do 12 on the front and 8 on the back, I'm going to count to 10, and then you got 8 on the back. So 10, 10. That's kinda like, it's kind of like bonus. The bonus is don't do two of them on the front. Don't do two of them on the back. Questions about this. It's weird. It's a weird way to do it. This professor does this. This test is a tribute to him. I love his test. Ten front, ten on the back. They're five points each. So, like, if you're, if I said, um, like the Russian question. If I said, tell me about Russian fighting, and you say they had uh, one gun for every two guys, that's five points. That's full credit. If you said they didn't have enough supplies, that's probably like two points, three points. If you leave it blank, I can't give you any points. It's no points unless that's when you skip. No points, okay? If you say a crap answer like that, less muscles, no idea what you're talking about, zero. I'd give you negative points if I could. That's ridiculous. She's made that up. Zero. <laughs> do you understand the points? So don't leave a blank. Like, like, let's say you do nine, and you got three blanks, and you're like, I just don't have a clue. Put something intelligent down. Let me give you, let me give you two points or something, okay? Don't just leave a blank. Do ten on the front, ten on the back, Talk about hundred. No questions there, so you want to move on to the others? Yeah. Okay, so let's do it. So ask, ask away. 
I got a question. I will say. Uh, I got a question. All right, nice and loud. The how the propaganda affect? How do propaganda affect the war? Anyone have the answer to this? Mm, what is propaganda? That's a good question. Okay, propaganda is uh, like technology. Man. It's kind of like the media. Okay, so the media today would be like TV and stuff like that, but they didn't have TV. So basically, the only media there is like think posters. Okay. So what is propaganda? Think about it like posters. Is everyone familiar with the famous poster where it's Uncle yes. Sam and it says, I want you to join the military, right? Yeah. So think about if we're all marching off to a war on a continent that's not even ours, that we don't even have any business fighting in, which one of you 18-year-old guys is going to be really excited about signing up, right? You're not going to be. But if there's posters everywhere with Uncle Sam on it that says, I want you to join the military, and there's posters everywhere that say like, we're doing this, you know, we're doing the right thing. We're making the world safe for democracy. And you see posters every time you go to the super center. There's posters everywhere. And there's everywhere is posters. After a few weeks of reading all these posters, you're going to kind of start changing your opinion. You're going to go, hey, this war is the right thing. In fact, I want to join the military. Propaganda influenced opinions. Changed your mind. You're an 18-year-old boy. You say, hey, I want to join the military now. Three weeks earlier, no way you want to join the military. But we, we join the war, they start printing propaganda up, and all of a sudden you want to join the military. So propaganda influenced opinions. Also, let's say your husband's over there fighting, and all the, all the wives are in town, and literally there's no men left in the whole town. And so all the wives are having to take over their husband's jobs, and life's getting hard, and it sucks, and they haven't heard from their husband in two, two months, or he may be dead, who knows. They're pretty upset. But if every time they go to the super center, there's a poster that says, hey, we're doing this war for the right thing, they're going to have a little bit more positive attitude. So it just influences public opinion. Influences opinion. Can yes. I talk to the horses? Yeah. Horses. How do horses affect the How do horses affect the war? They get stuck. Yeah, horses don't get stuck in the mud. You guys know that this is like the first war that we have tanks. So like tanks are really new. And sure, a tank's great. And it's really safe inside and everything like that. But as soon as a tank like... You know, because we're thinking about, when you think World War I, you think trench warfare, and trenches are muddy, messy holes in the ground. So tanks don't really go well with that. However, a horse is pretty good. Like, if a tank is about to drive into a hole, the tank can't even see it, because everybody's stuck on the inside of the tank, and they're just going to really drive straight into a hole, and then they're going to be stuck, and they can't get out, because the tanks aren't that good. A horse sees the hole and goes around it. So horses are still used. Now, you're just drawing a fear, because if you think, like, early wars, like 1700, Horses are being used all through here. And if you think like modern wars, tanks are being used back here. This war, the two overlap. Or this is kind of the last war where horses use, but it's the first war where tanks are used because they overlap here. Because we have tanks, they're not that good. Like they don't think, um, just think like four wheel drive or something. Like they don't have four wheel drive yet. And they only go four miles an hour. Okay? So a horse is faster and it can go in the mud. Um, but also it gets shot really easily. So, you know, whatever. But. Horses, horses affected the war because they could get around the mud. They could get around the messy battlefields without getting stuck like a tank would. Does this drawing make sense? It's kind of a weird timeline, but I'll try to kind of cap it off here. Okay. <coughs> Next question. How do women affect the war? How do women affect the war? I'm looking for two things on this. That's a great question. First obvious one, nurses. They were nurses in the military. Military <coughs> nurses. That's the first half. Second thing I'm really looking for is they took over men's jobs back at home. Back in the United States, when the war started, 65% of women who weren't employed got a job all of a sudden. That's a lot of women going to work all of a sudden. So women kept the country running back home. Factories and stuff like that. Then they kept polite. Let's do dogs then. So does everyone understand women? Nurses is the first half of the war. Also, they took over men's jobs. How did dogs affect the war? If you're out on a trench battlefield... And you say, hey, I need this message run back to our commander back over the hill. You say, okay, I got it, Captain. I got it. Jump out of the trench. He gets shot. Okay? But if you can strap it to a little dog, strap the letter to the dog, and have the dog run over there, dogs were low to the ground. It's going to be a lot harder to shoot a dog. And the dog is hauling. It's going fast. So it's, it's harder to shoot a smaller target who's lower to the ground, and he's going fast with a little letter strapped to his belly than it is like a guy walking like this with a letter. You know, he's going to get shot. I mean, so dogs help get messages around the battlefield. It just makes sense. They don't have telephones yet. They don't have radios. They don't have uh, texting. They can't email back the commander. So you just write a letter, write, or the commander even writes a note, straps it to a dog, and says, take that over there to that trench. Tell them what to do next. Then, uh, one more the Incorrect. Russia was the first half. Russia was the first half. Russia gets out. We get in. We're the second half. 
Next question. Um, um, are we only doing the for the allies and powers when you want us to pay one? Are we only doing the ones like easy names that we know, or we got to like do every single one of us and everything? That's a great question. I, I told you, I said, I need to know the two sides of the war. I want to know allies and central powers. I don't need you to list every country. I literally just want you to say one side is called allies, one side is called the central powers. That's all I do for that question. I just need the names of it. Then there were three specific country questions Germany, Great Britain, and the United States. Yes? Is Germany central powers? And yes. Britain, US? Germany is central powers. Britain and the U.S. are allies. That's correct. Other questions? Yes. So, what were Russia doing? Is what side were they on? Russia was the allies. <laughs> That's a good, yeah, Russia's confusing because they get out of the war halfway. Yeah. Did your college professor do this? Is there yeah. still this, is right. this is where I went to high school, though. He didn't answer questions. He said, check your notes, see you tomorrow. Yeah, I thought so. Germany is central powers. Other questions? If you guys are done, that's fine. I'll sit down, but don't make the decision for the whole class. I'll start to stay blue up there. Any other questions? Flu was what disease affected the whole world during the war? Flu. Does everyone feel comfortable about the test tomorrow? Yeah. Good. Lusitania is full of innocent people, and that's a very important point because the question is going to try to trip you up. The, tr the question is going to try to make it sound like it was a battleship and that it should have been sunk. It's not a battleship. It's full of innocent people. A bunch of Americans too. British people and Americans. And they sunk it. Did they get off the ship like the people on the Titanic? No. That's a good question. The reason the reason the Germans suck it is because it was full of bullets. Oh. They had bullets all in the cargo bay. They're trying to sneak them over. So the German Germany. I mean, that's fine. They should have. Well, we speculate they had bullets. Of course they did. So Germany, good job by sinking it. But it was also full of 1,100 people, 124 of which were ours. So that because we told them you better stop sinking about this. About one minute left in the period. Oh, Everyone, thank God. Everyone's comfortable with the test tomorrow. So you have your study guide. You're gonna to want to look over this. Make sure you know the following things. Make sure you're good to go. I got my information. You're coming tomorrow. You know the test site. You're gonna do ten on the front, ten on the back. Okay, you take it Monday. If you're not going to get here, take it Monday. The closer guys will take it Monday with you. That's fine. The bell's going to ring any second. Thank you guys very much. Hope you look forward to the test tomorrow. See you tomorrow, okay? Sure. So. This is such a great